move on to a very distinguished speaker, Ms. Paula Hammond, who is a professor at the Koch Institute and also head of the chemical engineering department, and moreover, a founder of at least two startups that I know about, uh, one of which is uh, Svaya, and the other, I believe, is Layer Bio, but I'm blanking on that second name. But in any case, she may be here to talk about lots of further innovation, and I believe she is ready to go. Is that right? Wonderful. Paula, please. Thank you, Trond. It's a real pleasure to have a chance to talk to you today, and I'm looking forward to the discussion that we're going to have. Uh, but first, I'm just going to describe uh, some of the work that we're doing in our lab to address cancer, and essentially talk about a very simple platform that we've developed uh, for generating nanoparticles that's modular and allows us to incorporate a range of different drugs, including unique combinations. And uh, this is really a system that's based on the idea that we can incorporate into uh, virtually any substrate very thin films that contain a dense amount of drug. And we do this using a very simple technique known as electrostatic layer by layer. It's based on the idea that you have an initial substrate that has some charge, and you introduce uh, that substrate to a dilute aqueous solution that contains something of opposite charge that will absorb until ultimately the surface charge is reversed. And now this uh, process can incorporate virtually any component as long as that component is multivalent and charged. So uh, in this case, uh, we're showing an example where you might go from a positively charged or polycationic solution, a rinse step, and then a negatively charged polymer and build up these thin films one by one. Now, uh, this is a very simple technique, but it allows us to incorporate, under very mild conditions, a range of different biologic drugs, including proteins and DNA. Now, the idea of doing this uh, is that we have a huge amount of control in the release profile that we generate. If we compare this to a more traditional polymer, let's say PLGA, or polylactic glycolic acid, uh, that more conventional coating is going to have a limit to how much you can load in before you get phase separation. That's simply the laws of thermodynamics. So typically, you might get anywhere from a half to one weight percent. If you get beyond that, you're going to have something that will phase separate. And uh, it will also dump everything out um, at once. Typically, if you have multiple drugs, they will also all be delivered with the same profile. In our work, we've been looking at the layering of a drug with this polyelectrolyte, and that allows us to make a part of the thin, thin, thin film the drug itself. So you can imagine that you can put down different drugs at different points along the uh, thin film and even get a kind of sequential or staged release with the appropriate arrangement. And of course, this can give us a very advantageous um, approach to synergistic drug combinations. Now, we've been doing this on large surfaces, which is what uh, my company, Layer Bio, focuses on. Uh, but at the Koch Institute, we've been doing this on tiny surfaces, nanoparticles that may be familiar to you, PLGA nanoparticles or liposomes that can contain a net charge. And we'll also have a chemotherapy drug in the core. The idea here is that we can actually introduce very synergistic therapies by incorporating into these uh, layers, siRNA, that will block a tumor defense mechanism against that chemotherapy drug, therefore allowing us to address very aggressive and uh, recurrent tumors that are resistant to uh, our, our most reliable chemotherapy treatments. Now, we can also use layer by layer to introduce a final outer layer to that drug, uh, which will allow us to introduce the nanoparticle systemically without absorbing uh, proteins in serum and getting eliminated very rapidly. So this stealth layer is also a part of our layer by layer construct. The general idea then is that if you're able to successfully do this and maintain a nanoparticle size that is appropriate uh, for uh, what's been termed the enhanced permeation and retention effect, uh, you can get accumulation into tumors as is shown here. Uh, and this allows us to use size as one mechanism for getting in, um, but we can also take advantage of the fact uh, that we can modulate that layer-by-layer -layer outer system so that it's responsive to pH. And in our case, we've been able to tune these systems so that we get a system that is very strongly negatively charged in the bloodstream, but when it gets into an hypoxic region of the tumor, becomes neutral or slightly positively charged, and therefore gets a much more enhanced cell uptake. We have something that is stealth-like in the blood, therefore, however, becomes sticky, uh, essentially, in the tumor 
and that encourages uptake uh, by cells in the tumor space. On top of those uh, uh, approaches, we can also use molecular targeting or ligands to actually uh, get these to get taken up specifically by tumor cells. In our case, we actually found that one of our favorite outer layers, which is hyaluronic acid, is strongly negatively charged, has a huge amount of associated water, and therefore is a wonderful stealth layer, gives us plasma half-lives of around 18 to 28 hours, and also binds to the CD44 receptor. And it turns out that CD44 is overexpressed in a large number of solid tumors, including ovarian cancer, triple negative breast cancer, non-small cell lung cancer, and that means that we actually have three different approaches for getting this nanoparticle into the tumor space and uh, ultimately being taken up uh, by tumor cells. And this is just work in which we're showing accumulation of these nanoparticles in a uh, tumor section uh, in that overlapping red and uh, green gives us that yellow color. Uh, that's the CD44 label overlapping with our nanoparticle. Uh, now we talked a little bit about that outer layer. The uh, inner layers contain a polycation that will allow us to complex siRNA, a layer of siRNA, and then that polycation again. So it's really just a simple sandwich, uh, a polycationic siRNA sandwich. Um, and we can actually select a range of different polycations. In this case, we used the polypeptide, poly-L-arginine. In our first examination of uh, proof of concept, we use a very simple model target, MRP1 protein. This is one of those pumps that sits at the cell membrane and pumps out doxorubicin. And uh, we used a, a fairly uh, familiar triple negative breast cancer uh, model. In this uh, subcutaneous model, uh, we have these aggressive tumors that tend to be uh, somewhat resistant to doxorubicin, a, a DNA damaging drug. Here you can see that we've constructed the particle as I've described of just four layers. Uh, positive charge, siRNA, positive charge, and hyaluronic acid. And uh, we have this uh, dosing regimen. We find that we can very successfully knock down uh, MRP1 in uh, the tumor section here. You can see we're getting something close to 85% knockdown. So our siRNA is protected, remains active, and is able to be delivered effectively. Um, and we can find uh, in, in this very simple model uh, that uh, we in the case of the combination therapy, are able to get tumor remediation, which you can see in this very last panel here, or in the red um, uh, data in the uh, diagram that we're actually seeing regression of the tumor. This got us excited, but we wanted to look at more challenging models. So very briefly, we looked at non-small cell lung cancer, and uh, we actually used uh, a model derived from uh, Tyler Jack's work at the Koch Institute, uh, in which we uh, are looking at two very common genetic mutations for aggressive non-small cell lung cancer. One of them is uh, KRAS oncogene, and the other is uh, single point mutation or elimination of p53. Uh, and in this case, we delivered siRNA against KRAS and a microRNA that replaces the function of p53. Very briefly, we built our particle with the same construct, but this time we put two different nucleic acids in that blue singular layer. Uh, the siRNA and the MIR-34A. We find in delivery that uh, we can very effectively target the tumor. Here you want to focus on the lungs, uh, and we see a comparison between mice that have healthy non-tumored lungs and mice that have uh, tumors, orthotopic tumors in the lung. You can see a very strong difference in where the nanoparticle is accumulating here. That strong accumulation in the tumor of the lungs is due to the fact that, indeed, these do ex overexpress CD44. And we find that uh, in this study, the combination therapy, which is shown in the green survival line in, in the table here, and I'm sorry, I can't point effectively, so therefore I'm just uh, giving you some color cues. I apologize to anyone who is colorblind, um, but uh, that furthest one uh, shows that we have about 30% increased survivability with the combination of siRNA and, uh, in this case, cisplatin. What's unique about this is that a singular particle contains uh, a negatively charged siRNA, maintains its activity, and has it complexed with cisplatin, which ordinarily we would not put together because the two would essentially uh, complex with each other. Finally, we uh, also looked at even more challenging cancers. This is an example of lymphoma. This was a collaboration with Janssen uh, as a part of um, 
uh, a project that grew from our co-collaboration. And in this case, we were able to show that we could even knock down BCL2, which is a fairly difficult target. And uh, we are showing here the packaging and some of the morphology of these nanoparticles that we generate. And in this case, uh, some of the efficacy when we uh, essentially attach antibodies to the uh, nanoparticle. We have a large number of these carboxylic acids present, which allow us to functionalize the outer layer. And we find that by using the correct antibody, we can very effectively address lymphoma, which is a blood-borne tumor rather than a solid tumor. Uh, and here you can see, again, differences in the survivability, where um, we see a, a very uh, nice, flat uh, survivability for mice treated with the uh, dual-targeted. There were two antibodies, CD20 and I think uh, CD40, uh, CD44, and in the case where we just have CD44, which is almost as good. So uh, this is a very brief description. So I'll just summarize here by saying that using a very simple approach of electrostatics combined with known nanoparticle carriers, we can incorporate very synergistic combinations in a singular nanoparticle. On top of that, we're able to allow the delivery to take place in a staged fashion. In all of these cases, the nucleic acid is released in the first 24 hours, and the chemotherapy drug is released over a period of a few days. And this gives us the ability to essentially turn off or reprogram these tumor cells before we deliver the main dose. So I'd like to end here, uh, acknowledge those who uh, did the work who are shown in bold, and uh, thank all of the sponsors. Uh, thank you very much, and I believe I am just about out of time. Thank you. We could maybe take a quick question if I get my catch box over here. All right, we're ready for questions. We could take a quick question from uh, the audience, maybe. Um, this is bright and early in the morning. I'm, I'm excited about one thing. So a lot, we, we deliberately didn't announce a lot about what this uh, workshop was going to be about because everything is so emergent. How many of the techniques that you were using in, in this recent work that's not even published yet actually existed five years ago? Uh, that's an excellent question. Uh, in the work that we're doing, uh, five years ago, we had, of course, these liposomal carriers and uh, PLGA carriers, but this combination with the uh, layer by layer system is something that evolved um, essentially out of our lab in the past, I would say, five to six years. So we were just at that time at the beginning of understanding what happens when we put a layer down, uh, where, it, where it goes to, how we can uh, influence the trafficking. Uh, so I think uh, what's really exciting here is that we can take uh, something that we understand, uh, a liposomal carrier, but which has some limitations, and actually turn it into something which is a much more effective uh, targeting system. Um, we greatly increase the circulation time, for example. I didn't go into the details, but uh, we actually are able to get much longer blood plasma half-lives. Uh, that gives us time to get into the tumor and to get this really enhanced efficacy, as well as the stage delivery. Perfect. We'll take one more quick question, and then we'll go to the next speaker. Over there. Up. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh. Did not catch expect box. that. <laughs> All the catch box. Thank you. Good, good, good. So thanks, thanks for the talk, Dr. Hammond. So, um, Thinking about the synergy between in industry and academia, and you know how much you've been developing, and also thinking how you can accelerate that and actually get those treatments to patients sooner. How do you see big corporations come in interactions with you or MIT in general, and, and how, like, do you think it's like happening now, or would you like to see more, and how? It is happening. Um, in fact. Uh I gave that last example, which we would never have looked at uh, a blood-borne cancer if we weren't uh, partnered uh, with, uh, in a collaboration with Janssen, for example. And uh, a lot of our early work was uh, a part of the Transcend program, which is a collaboration with the Koch Institute and Janssen. Uh, in the meantime, uh, now we have uh, ongoing uh, engagements with uh, other companies uh, that are neighbors. Uh, Novartis is one example. Um, there are several others that were very excited about just, uh, just starting to talk about research agreements with, and uh, we're excited because those companies are there. What's unique about it is that uh, it's a little bit different than uh, the um, older version of corporate sponsorship. Uh, what I've found in these collaborations is that we're working directly with the research scientists 
Uh, we're meeting together with the students and the postdocs uh, and uh, the members of the uh, research team and we're talking about the problems. We're actually problem solving together. And that's a very unique and different approach than what I saw maybe about 10 years ago. I think we do need more of it. We're going to cut it off here. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, John.